Officer Mark Dawson, so thank you for joining us today for Property Safety. And I've got to ask you, of all the thousands of programs that you have done over the years in the city of Plano, which one is probably the most requested? Uh, well, first of all, Chris, thank you for having me back. Uh, it's quite an honor, uh, the, number one, that you're doing this for the citizens of Plano. This is really, really nice that you're doing this. A lot of good information we're going to go over today. Uh, and number two, it's just an honor to be here uh, uh, as I wind my career down uh, that you would ask me to be a part of this for the second time. So I appreciate that. You know, I've done, gosh, tens of thousands of presentations over the last quarter century and uh, probably one of the most requested ones we get in this office is a home security survey where we would come out and look at the existing security in your house and tell you how to improve it. Well that sounds surprising to me because Plano has consistently been rated one of the number one safest cities in America so why would that be something that's needed in Plano? Uh, well that's true Chris. Uh, Plano is consistently in the top three in the state of Texas for the city with the lowest crime rate for a city our size and we're always in the top ten in the nation for that. Uh, but even then, because we're such an affluent society here in Plano, a affluent city, um, if you're going to be a burglar and go into that line of work, you got to realize that you're risking 20 years of your life in the penitentiary if you get caught. So if you're going to be a burglar and, and risk 20 years of your life, are you going to break into a $40,000 house or a $940,000 house? Because the penalty is still the same. It really doesn't matter. Uh, cause if, so if you're going to take the risk, go to that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, uh, which is Plano, Allen, Frisco, McKinney, Prosper now is coming online. Uh, and that's the burglars know that. So if you're going to, I mean, Plano is a safe, safe city, yes. But still, you know, we, uh, we have a lot of good stuff here that they like. I think that's true. You sold me. So now tell me, what goes into a home security assessment? What are you doing when you go out there? If the citizens in Plano will call the crime prevention unit and uh, set up a date and a time for an officer to come out there, it starts there. Uh, a lot of citizens contact us after they've been burglarized. And you got to realize crime prevention, the, our unit is exactly what it is. It's crime prevention. We're supposed to get there before the bad guys do. We've got over 400 officers here in Plano, and the majority of those, vast majority, uh, are reactive to the citizens' needs. Something has already happened to them, and then they call us out, and we take reports, witness statements, fingerprints, and try to put a case together to find out who wronged that citizen. Uh, but we're crime prevention. Uh, we are in this unit here, so we're supposed to get there before the bad guys do. And that's what a home security assessment's all about. We come out to your house and we try to improve your existing security that's already there. But a lot of people wait till they've been burglarized first, and then they call us. So the smart citizens call us out right now before the burglary occurs so we can come out there and uh, make it really difficult to get in their house. A home security survey really uh, is rests on three pillars. Uh, we make it more difficult, more time consuming, and more noisy for someone to get in your house. The, it's called a home security assessment. It's not a called a, a burglary proof presentation. There's no way I can make your house burglar proof. If somebody wants to get in, they can get in. But the bad guys, I would say 90-something percent of our burglars are dopers. Uh, they like that crack pipe and that methamphetamine, and, and, uh, and they're lazy individuals. They really are. If, if, if they had any drive, if they had any ambition, then they, they'd go out and have a job. They'd have a car, they'd have a house, maybe not as nice as, as, as some people, but they would have, you know, they, they would have some good stuff. But, uh, but they're just hooked on that stuff so bad, uh, they become lazy and they don't want a job. Uh, so if we can take that lazy person's um, attitude, I guess, if you want to say, and apply it against them, that would be nice. If we can take a lazy person and make them have to work, really work, to get in your house, then they'll go somewhere else. And we do that by making it more difficult, more time-consuming, and more noisy. Well, that sounds good. A couple of questions that a citizen might have is, uh, how long does it take and how much does it cost? Uh, generally takes about an hour to do one of these, um, and, and the, 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 it's, it's free. This is Plano. Your tax dollars have already paid for this. So we come out there for free. It takes an hour, maybe an hour and a half, depending on how many questions that the uh, homeowners have. Uh, sometimes it's a man and a wife. Sometimes it's just a wife. Sometimes it's just a husband. Uh, single women, uh, I, I don't know why a single woman would not want to have this done uh, with, with, with as many um, 
you know, I don't know, nut cases. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. Uh, but it's free, yeah. Well, that's great. Well, for those that are listening, this is where it'd be a little more challenging because you have some things, items to show today, some show and tell that you're going to sh show, show. So you can check this out on the video. If you go to the City of Plano's YouTube channel mm -hmm. and then go to Playlist and look at Safety Minute to see the products that you're going to share. Now, I know that we don't endorse any specific product, but there are some things you're going to show as an example that a homeowner can do to help make it, like you said, more burglar resistant, right? Make it more difficult, time consuming, noisier. Mm -hmm. All right. So can we see some of those things? Sure. When I come to a, to a house, one of the first things I do is check your deadbolt locks to make sure they throw properly. And when I open the door and look, 99% of the time, this is what I see in the door frame. Um, this is called a strike plate. And this little strike plate here, you have one right here that the doorknob will come and, and latch into, and about five and a half inches above it, you've got one that the deadbolt lock will throw into as well. Well, this is very, very thin, almost like a piece of tin here. Uh, the screws are about a I don't know, half inch long, three, uh, three eighths of an inch long, and the wood that they're screwed into is just a door frame. Your door frame has been sanded and caulked and painted and it's pretty, it's exterior wood. So you have little bitty cheesy screws in thin metal right here screwed into that little door frame. And it doesn't take much for someone to kick your door and rip these little screws right out of that door frame. So all burglars have one thing in common. Uh, pretty much all of them start by burglarizing your house like this. They knock on the door because burglars don't want to go where there's people, obviously. It's a property crime, it's not a people crime. So when, when you're at your house and someone knocks on your door, always answer the door. We'll get into that after a while a little bit, but always answer the door. But anyway, here you are at the house and someone's knocking on your door. You don't answer the door because you fear who's out there. You're home all, all alone. They get the idea that no one's there. And uh, then they just apply some pressure by, with their foot by kicking your door in. And these little screws pop right out and it just shatters your door frame about, about a foot, foot and a half like this and your door flies open. Um, I tell people it's just a courtesy that anybody knocks on your front door. <laughs> Yeah. Because if they lean on it hard enough, they're going to come in your house. That's all you have. Now, the good wood in your house are the two two by four studs uh, that make up the skeleton of your house, the frame of your house. We have two story houses in Plano, three story apartment buildings, four story apartment buildings in Plano, and all that weight up there rests on those two by four studs on the first floor. That's the good stuff. Wouldn't it be great if we could take these little screws out and put some real screws in and get a security strike plate? When I was growing up, a lot of people had this little chain hanging down by the door that they'd take and they'd slide it in this little, you know, the little the latch there on the door. And it had little tiny screws in the molding and on the door. And, and the palm of your hand would just pop that up like that. It offers no security. But if you screw into those two by four studs, that's where the power is. So right off the bat, I would come to your house, go to each exterior door, see your tiny little screws here and your little cheesy strike plate, and I would tell you to get rid of those and get a security strike plate. A security strike plate looks like this. See if you can tell the difference between this and this. Oh, yeah. This is a security strike plate. The viewers probably can't see this, but the metal here is about twice as thick as the metal here. I have nine three to four inch screws that hit those two by four studs. You have four half inch screws to stop at the door frame. So right off the bat, I've got three real screws here above the deadbolt lock, three long screws below the doorknob, and three screws in between. And this fits about 90% of the doors that I throw it up against. Um, once you put this in your door frame, uh, the only part that you actually see is just the little lip sticking out, just like you do now. If you'll go to your front door, you'll see this tiny little lip sticking out. Uh, and that's the only part that you see. Well, so once you put this in, we haven't changed the appearance of your door on the outside at all. On the inside, you see the little lips. On the outside, it looks like it always has. So your burglar comes up now and does what he does knocks on your door, rings your doorbell, and rears back and kicks that door, and it doesn't open. And this has never happened to him before. This is more difficult, more time consuming, more noisy, this is what he does. So he kicks again, and he kicks again, and he kicks again. He gets mad, and 
and that's what makes them go somewhere else. So all your exterior doors need to get rid of the little security strike plates and get a security strike plate and put them in there. That's one of the things we do to your doors. That sounds great. What doors do these need to be on? Uh, every exterior door. Uh, you have a front door, you have a back door, and a lot of people don't realize it, but the door between the house and the garage is an exterior door. Uh, your overhead garage door, the, the, the one where you, drive, you raise up and pull your car in and shut behind you, they think that's a secure door, therefore most people don't lock the door between the house and the garage. That uh, overhead bay door that you drive through is super easy to defeat. There's three or four ways I know right now I can defeat that easily that I've learned from burglars. So you need to secure the door between the house and the garage as well. So this would go on your front door. Chances are you have a doorknob and a deadbolt lock. Same thing for your back door. You probably have a, dead, a deadbolt lock up here and a door, uh, doorknob here. The door between the house and the garage usually doesn't have a deadbolt from my experience, but they make a single security strike plate too. A single security strike plate looks like this. Same concept as this. This has two holes. This is called a double security strike plate. Uh, doorknob, deadbolt lock. And the door between the house and the garage has just one for your doorknob, but it has six holes right here that you put six long screws in that hit those two by four studs. That's the strength of all this stuff, those two by four studs. And there again, once they kick the door, they expect it just to fly open, and it doesn't. So all exterior doors need a security strike plate, except a double door. Double doors will not accept this, but we, we can talk about that after a while. Okay. Hey, Mark, you mentioned that most doors, like 90%, will have that standard, you know, distance between the deadbolt. I've gone to some of these homes where the deadbolt's really high. In a case like that, could you use the single strike plate? You can. Uh, I have been to houses before where I suggest you put a single strike plate here uh, for the uh, doorknob and go above here if the deadbolt's that high and put another one up here. And that's even stronger because instead of having nine real long screws, you'd have 12. You'd have six down here and six up here that all hit that two by four stud. Yes, yes, you can. Now, where does someone buy these type? Most of our viewers have probably never seen a double security strike plate and these four inch screws. Where do you get those? Go to your local hardware store. You've got Lowe's, you've got Home Depot, you've got Ace Hardware. We have Elliot's here. Go to where they sell the doorknobs and thing, that, that aisle, and you'll find these hanging up on a pegboard. Okay. So after they do that, are they pretty much done? Is that all they need to do? No, sir. No, no, that's, that's just the beginning. Um, can this be defeated? You bet. If, uh, if you have glass in your door, even though you have a strike plate with all these screws going into those two by four studs, if there's glass in the doorway, I can still break that glass and reach inside and flip that deadbolt lock and still open that door. I don't care if the screws are two feet long. If I, once that deadbolt lock is out of the way, it's gone. Um, so this needs help. It can also be defeated by someone repeating, repeatingly kicking that front door in because every time that foot contacts that door, that deadbolt got lock gets just a little bit weaker, 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 and all of a sudden it'll, it can open like that. So, so the deadbolt can break. Yes. Ah. Once you put this in, your deadbolt becomes the weakest part of your security mm -hmm. because this is stronger than the standard deadbolt. So there's a few ways this can be defeated. Uh, so you really need to add something to that. And the best product that I've found after doing this for 25 years, and I've done internet research and talked to burglars, um, is called a door defender, this product right here. Inside this, this uh, package here, <clears throat> you have a little piece right here that looks like this. You have three long screws like this and you have the actual lock itself, uh, which is about a four inch disc. Uh, this is 12 gauge plate steel. You can't see the thickness on camera really, but you're not gonna be able to bend this. This is, this is incredibly strong material right here. And uh, these screws right here use the two by four studs we've talked about to your advantage. Um, and I'll show you how this works. Let's get up and, and, and talk about this. Okay, Chris, when I come to your house for an installation, I put these things about six feet off the ground. Uh, now, I realize this is just taped up here right now, but at your house, you're going to have three and a half to four inch screws this long. They're going to bypass just a little door frame like you have and go into those two by four studs and, those three, and there's three of those screws that do this. So this piece right here is thin enough and designed to go between the door frame and the door when you shut it. So when you shut the door, this is what you see. 
and it covers half your door frame and half your door, which would be right here. Your door cannot open until you take this off. It is instant on and instant off. It takes this long to put on and that long to take off. And this does double duty. It not only keeps bad guys out, it keeps good guys in. So if you have small children running around, if you have a pool in the backyard, this is about six foot off the ground. Keeps burglars out, keeps kids in. A lot of people are concerned with aesthetics, what it looks like after you install it. Once you shut the door, that's all you see right there, just that little nub sticking out. Just enough to grab the lock right here. And remember, this is 12 gauge plate steel. It goes just like that. And that's all that you see. And the majority of the houses have a, a white wall, white trim. So it kind of blends in a little bit. But if someone were to kick this door open or break out the window and flip the deadbolt lock, the door would open to right here, and that's it. And there again, you don't know why. You're on the outside kicking right here. All the force trying to muscle its way into your house. The front snap kicks, the back donkey kicks here. They're all being applied right here. But what's keeping you safe and secure in your property is way up here like that. So once again, that keeps you safe. Instant off like that. Instant on like that. When I came into this unit, I had never seen, I'd gone out to burglary calls and people would ask me, is, is it possible someone could come back? And I'm like, yeah. And they wanted some kind of guidance. I didn't know what to tell them. And so when I came into crime prevention and you taught me this stuff, it was eye-opening yes. and amazing. And so I know this is going to be a very valuable to other people. But something happened. As you and I were, were doing this and sending people to go purchase this door defender, we got a phone call and they said, we can't get it. They don't sell it anymore over there. And I said, what are you talking about? And it turns out, uh, well, you can pick up the story from there. What happened? <clears throat> well, whenever I got finished giving up a presentation to a group of people, they all hit the hardware store the next day. Mm -hmm. And literally like locusts, you know, in a cornfield, they just bought every one of these things that the store had because it's an incredibly strong product. I have them on my house. A lot of cops have them on their houses. Um, and the guy who made this called me one day and said, I'm retiring. I'm not making it anymore. It's been fun, you know. And I, and I went into a panic. I said, no, this is one of the strongest things. I really pushed this product. I've been pushing this thing for 20 years. Um, my gosh, don't you can't quit. He said, I'm done. I'm gone. If you want to make them yourself, you can, but I'm done. And I asked him, uh, can I do it? Is there a patent on this? Or, uh, he said, no, 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 just make them yourself. So I did. So uh, the only place in the world, and I'm not trying to make money here. I'm a police officer. The city pays me well, and I've got great benefits. But the only place that you can get this is at copsforsafety at gmail.com. C-O-P-S-F-O-R-S-A-F-E-T-Y at gmail.com. And that's the only place you can get them. I wish the guy still made them. I wish he still sold them. But I'm such a big believer in this product that I went on my own and manufactured it myself. And I am so glad that you did because I'm like you. We've been showing people. In fact, I have these at my house. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, I hired you to come do it. because. I, and when I saw you do the installation, you every cop and every fireman I know has a side business. I work at the movie theaters. I do traffic direction. And what you do is you do the installation of these things. And I yes. can tell that the viewers, you do a fantastic job. And I told people that when I tell them to you that, that you do this, I have no monetary incentive. I'm, you're not giving me a kickback. I'm not making no. any money by telling you. There's a few reasons I'm gonna tell you personally why I, why I recommend you. Number one, I know what background they put you through because they put me through it. So I have no concern you're going to come back and burglarize the house or attack the woman. And the other thing is you do a fantastic job. You did mine. I was impressed. You come with a little, you got a little kit with all your stuff and you have a whole nother, like, like Mr. Bob Builder or something. All of a sudden you've got all this stuff and you're clean. You swept up after the mess. And so fantastic. And I'm going to tell you, my wife and I, every night we feel better. We feel safer when we go to sleep. But what we do is we flip that deadbolt and I put that door defender on all my doors before I go to sleep, before I set that alarm. Sure. And so they're fantastic. So um, tell me about what is the cost if somebody were to purchase this versus if someone's like me that says, I don't know how to do it and they want to bring you in. Well, how much is it for, for the, just the stuff to buy and how much is it if they want to have you come do an install? 
if you want to buy the door defender, I priced them at the cheapest deadbolt lock uh, that you can get at the local hardware store. They're about 35 bucks a piece for the cheap one, so that's what I priced this at. Um, don't make a lot of money on it, but I do come out and install these things. A lot of people who've installed these, the husband tries, he goes to work, then the wife calls me and says, hey, my husband stripped out all the screw heads because those are massive screws. Yeah. Um, and, there's, and, and, and if you accidentally put this uh, over your alarm, um, the little magnetic contact in your door frame, if you actually cover that up, then you've killed your alarm system. There's a few things you need to know about this. I've been installing them for a long time. I arrive at someone's house and I buy everything. I buy all the strike plates, I got the screws, I got the door defenders, I've got everything that I need to do this, and peepholes. We'll talk about peepholes in a little bit. But I purchase all the products so you don't have to run around and worry about it. And I'll come to your house, and for a typical house that has a front door and a back door and a door to the garage, each door gets a double or single security strike plate. Each door gets a door defender like this. The front door would get a peephole. The door between the house and the garage would get a peephole. And I buy it and install it, and it usually takes about an hour to an hour and a half. And average house is about $350. And every one that I've ever installed, when I contact them and do a follow-up call, they tell me, gosh, I sleep better at night. Mm -hmm. I just, knowing this stuff is in there, it, mm -hmm. it gives me a peaceful night's rest like that because I know they're going to have to tear my house up to get in. More difficult, more time-consuming, more noisy. Just like I said, I was talking to a group of people oh, a while back, and I mentioned the $350 price, and there was a lady in like the second or third row that kind of looked at me wide-eyed, and I said, do you think that's expensive? Do you think, I mean, I mean, I'm protected. She said, no, no, no. She said, I, was, I thought just the opposite. She said, I had just purchased a refrigerator for $2,000 to protect $30 worth of food. And for $350, you can protect everything in my house. <laughs> and yeah. I thought, that's pretty cool. That's a good analogy. I think I'll use it from now on. Yeah. So it's not all that expensive, especially when you think what you could lose in a burglary. Mm -hmm. Or worse, if you're home and someone kicks the door because uh, a... Um, property crime could turn into a personal crime pretty quick. So you mentioned peepholes. So what about peepholes? Uh, peepholes, yes. Uh, a lot of, just, just a little old peephole right here. People look at this as if it's not like a big deal. But this is incredibly important uh, if you want to secure your home. With a peephole, when I install this in the front door, I can look through the peephole and see you and you can't see me. And I like that because if your front door has a big oval piece of glass in it or a big square, uh, you, you got to realize that when someone's out there knocking on your door, when you come around the corner to answer that door, they can see you and you can see them. And I don't like people looking in your house, especially if you're a female and you walk around the corner and there's a couple of guys at your front door knocking on your door. You're not expecting anybody. You don't know who they are. You've never seen them. And they're looking at you and you're looking at them. I would cover that window with drapes or window frosting. You look a little can of frosting and spray paint your front door. Uh, to, uh, still let the light in, but I would cover that. And between the where the oval glass is and the edge of your door, that little six inch space where there's wood, I would put a peephole there to her height. <laughs> a lot of women have to get on tiptoes their whole life to look through a peephole. When I install them, I call the woman over and I say, come over here and you know show me how high your eyeball is. So you put a peephole there. Now when somebody knocks on your door and rings the doorbell, you can boldly walk up to your door because the window's covered and you look through your new peephole and you just yell, who is it? Like that. You let them know that you're home. Remember, burglars always go where there are no people. That's why they knock on your door and ring your doorbell. They want to ensure no one is home. When you drive down a street in Plano, Texas, and you see these big, beautiful homes that we have, in their mind, they think, wow, it takes a lot of money to support this house. Mortgage payments and bills, monthly bills and air conditioning. So mom has to have a job and dad has to have a job. Kids are in school. So at 9 o'clock in the morning, no one's home. But just to ensure that, I'm going to knock on the door and ring the doorbell. When no one answers, I kick the door in. So here you are. Let's just say you're a typical plain old housewife. You're home, and someone knocks on the door. Uh, you go to your favorite window or your favorite curtain. You peek out like this to see who's there. And there are a couple of guys there that don't look like they belong in your neighborhood. So you tell yourself, I'm not opening that door. I'm here all by myself. I'm single. My husband's going to work or whatever. I'm not opening that door. And you go right back into watching TV or whatever you were doing. 
that tells the people on the outside that no one's home and it's safe to kick that door in and the door gets kicked in because everybody has this and a property crime then can become a people crime so like i said before cover that window and boldly go up there and challenge who's at that door when someone knocks on your door always answer the door I didn't say open the door. I said answer the door. Always answer the door. When someone knocks, you yell, who is it? Can I help you? Something like that. Um, because you're going to have this. You're going to have this. You're going to have this. And why do you want to undo all those things to open the door? So don't open the door. Just answer the door. Let them know that someone's home. And, and one more of these I would put on the door between the house and the garage, a peephole. There again to her height. When I'm in a group of people talking to them about a home security you know, situation, giving a class on this, um, I tell them that uh, the number one way to get in a house with no forced entry in Plano is just through an open garage door. We have so many rear entry uh, driveways here in Plano. You drive down an alley and enter your house from the back, and then you, you go in. People just don't shut their garage doors. And it's like one out of ten houses in Plano seem to have their garage door open all the time. Uh, so that's why you need a peephole in the door between the house and the garage. When you think the garage door is shut, the overhead door, and it's really not, if you hear something in there, if you hear rattling or conversation, or is it an animal, is it burglars, is it kids, is it felons, you don't know. The only way to find out is to take that door defender off and take all those screws out of play and remove the only barrier between you and whatever's out there, unless you have a peephole. So you put a peephole in. Then if you hear something in the garage, you walk over to your, peep, your peephole behind that solid door, behind all these screws we've been talking about. You look through your new peephole and go, oh my gosh, who's that? And you pick up the phone and call 911 and we come out, we come in the alley and boom, we got them right there, all keeping you safe. So I would suggest two peepholes, one in the front door and one in the door between the house and the garage. Okay, so I can see putting this hardware on is very helpful, and we're not going to open the door, but we're going to speak through that locked door. But let's talk about something that everyone's concerned about in terms of vulnerability, windows. Windows. There's two weaknesses with windows that I've recognized. Number one, you can see through them, just like we talked about the front door. People can see through, through your front door as they knock. And, uh, and uh, same thing in your bedroom, in your den. Anywhere there's a window, if it's not covered properly, people can see through it. So that's one danger of windows. I really, really makes me nervous. As the sun goes down, so do your window coverings. We co talked about it, personal safety. But also, everyone that's listening to this podcast right now thinks their windows are locked. They think their windows are locked because they can't remember the last time they unlocked them. But they, not, but they may not be the only person that unlocked that window. Uh, you could have children, you could have guests, maybe your, your spouse unlocked the window, maybe it was springtime and, and you opened it up uh, and then forgot to lock it when you shut it. I know this, I know that a lot of the houses that I go into in Plano here and look at their windows um, when I'm doing a home security assessment, a lot of the times I find at least one or two or three windows that are unlocked and the homeowner just can't believe it. The last thing you do before you go to bed every night is you go to your front door and your back door and the door between the house and the garage and ensure that they're locked. Everybody does that. But nobody ever checks their windows. And everybody thinks that their windows are locked. Everybody thinks that their garage doors are down. Like I said earlier, as I'm talking to a group of people, um, when I say close your garage door, everybody in my audience is thinking, uh, well, he's talking to that person. He's not talking to me because I keep my garage door closed all the time. Well, he must be talking to that couple over there because I always, and I promise you, as you're listening to the, me talk, think about this. There have been times that you opened the door between the house and the garage and looked up and went, oh my gosh, the garage door is open. <gasps> I had no idea, and you turn, you run around out there to make sure your golf clubs are still there, your power equipment, you know, and all the your lawn equipment. But so it, it, we're people; we just mess up sometimes. So that's why this stuff is just critical. Get this, do it one time. You buy it one time. You have it installed by me or someone else. I don't care. Just do it, and do it before the burglary comes, not after. Do it now. Yeah, I'll tell you, I've got all that stuff, but you made me realize. I need to go check my windows. <laughs> okay. Okay, Mark, this is really valuable. I'm wondering, is this the only way this information is disseminated like one-on-one -on -one home security assessment or can a group also hear about these? 
Oh, yes, I'd rather do a group setting, to be honest with you. Uh, we will come out to your homeowners association. If your annual meeting is, you know, a month from now, uh, call us up. Give us an hour and let us bring our kid out here and show you how we can defeat your current security and talk about this stuff. We'll do it for HOAs. We'll do it for church groups. We'll do it for uh, women's uh, clubs, men's clubs. Uh, it's, we do these things all the time. If I can do a group setting and knock out 20 or 30 houses, I'd, I, I can do that. Or I can do one house at a time 30 times. Uh, it's much more efficient for me to knock this out. So if you've got you know, in a group setting, so if you've got a group, we would love to come out. You bet. Yeah. And, and plus we can answer questions from. What if we had a group of people that had like a dozen of their neighbors and they wanted to get together the house or the library? Can we come to a group as well? Small? You bet. You bet. Just call the crime prevention unit. Call our secretary. She'll forward your uh, voicemail or email to us, and then we'll set a call you. We'll set up a date and a time to get together. Get as many people as you can. Have a couple come over here and invite their friends over to the house. I can knock out four or five houses in, in one deal uh, setting right there. So, and some people uh, they want me to go to Frisco. I've had lots of presentation requests from outside of the city: Allen, Frisco, McKinney, Richardson, Dallas. And, uh, and we can't go outside the city and do a security survey, but those people who live in Plano, if they have friends in Carrollton, they invite the Carrollton people to their house in Plano, then you call us up and we can secure everybody, just as long as it's in the city limits, yeah. Speaking of going out, you mentioned about your retirement coming soon. Yes. Mark Dawson is going to retire. It's one of the, the reasons I wanted to sit you down and grab some of that information that you have to share with the, the residents before you leave and also so that we could remember too because you've got a, a well but uh, what about after you retire like you mentioned sp going out are you going to be available mark dawson to go speak to these other communities since you're no longer locked down with plano oh yes i've been doing this for quite a few years uh, in my neighborhood in other neighborhoods i've been as far south as san antonio as far north as canada doing this I go all over the place and bring my little kit with me and, and secure your home you know, all over the place. Yes, sir. I keep telling you, Mark, listen, you love going on cruises with that best friend wife of yours. You should be a speaker on the cruises. Then <laughs> <laughs> you can do two things at once. Get well, me a free cruise out of that, huh? There you, you can yeah. do it. Officer Dawson, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate it. Thank you, citizens of Plano.